वेलकम टू योर ओन चैनल ऑफ राइट फंडा वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग द डाउट डिस्कशन सेशन टुडे इज द सेकंड सेशन ऑफ डाउट डिस्कशन फॉर द चैप्टर इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स एंड टुडे फर्स्ट डाउट वी हैव टेकन दैट ऑफ द देवव्रता हियर इज अ ब्यूटीफुल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स दैट इज एस एच एम इन इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स लेट्स रीड द क्वेश्चन इस थीन रॉड ऑफ मास स्मॉल एम carrying uniform negative charge minus q is placed symmetrically along the axis of a thin ring of radius capital r carrying uniformly distributed charge capital q the ring is held fixed in free space and the length of the rod is 2r find the period of the small amplitude of oscillation of the rod along the axis of the ring so let's see what are the key questions are there we want to see the first thing the key key points are there is that one thing is the find the period of small oscillation it is saying the small amplitude number one number thing that the ring is held fixed the ring is not moving it is held fixed and a small oscillation small amplitude that is the key word there and two are is the length of the rod and uh, you have to find we have to find out the time period of oscillation we need to calculate let's calculate this here is our ring and its uh, radius is r and charge is q and this is our rod and the rod is negatively charged and it is charge is minus q charge there so we have solved this type of problem then shm in electrostatic when a particle execute shm along the axis of the ring but right now in this problem this is a rod executing shm so let's see how to do so do we do we need to integrate or something we to see so here you want to see this one this length of the rod is 2r so now this rod is symmetrically placed at the rod is symmetrically placed everywhere if you see this rod the ring will be attracting this one this side will be attracting this and like this this will be attracted like this this also will be attracted like this this will be so every point will be attracted like this so net force on the rod is equal to zero but if it is slightly disturbed then the net force may not be equal to zero let's see so but one thing we know that the force at any point force at any point on the rod which is this at a distance x from this and this small the electric field here is given by electric field is equal to k q x k q x by r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 this we know the on the axis of the uh, ring what is the electric field is there and ch any charge particle placed there they will be experiencing force due to this electric field so if this is slightly disturbed this rod is slightly disturbed then see what will happen the rod will slightly disturb the new will be like this so this suppose this rod has been shifted off by a distance of x so if you see this rod is gone up little bit but again now also we'll see there will be some symmetry will be there this rod length right now the below whatever length of the rod is there this is equal to right now r minus x similarly this side also there will be r minus x will be there for this length the forces will be balanced but extra length this is there how much extra is there that you need to think how much extra length is there is that you have shifted here then r minus r is made the cancel here 2x length is there due to this 2x length this here the whatever force this will be applying exerting that will be the restoring force that will be restoring force that force will be responsible for bringing the rod back to its position so basically we need to find the force on this small element part so if the lambda is the charge per unit length the amount of charge that i have considered here that is lambda into 2x lambda into 2x so basically the center mass of the rod has been shifted by x distance but the net force that is acting is due to this much part other part they are getting forces on the other part they are getting cancelled so we write the field at this point and this f on this part will be equal to electric field into this much charge then we to multiply and we'll see how much the value is coming 
so the force will be equal to minus k q and x that distance axial distance that where the uh, charge is there is equal to capital r by r square for the radius and distance clearly r square another thing to the power 3 by 2 into our charge lambda into 2x this is the net force that is acting on this i have taken the x as the positive so the force is uh, coming to be negative so from this we can calculate the acceleration f is equal to ma we can substitute and we can get the values of uh, the value to be equal to minus k q into 2 lambda by 2 root 2 m r square r cube and r square cancel into this is equal to x and we know this lambda lambda will not given so lambda will will substitute lambda is equal to q by 2r but 2r is the length of this is there so if this if we substitute the value then acceleration will come out to be equal to minus k q q and this will be equal to lambda by 2r is there so 2 root 2 m r q into x so we saw that the acceleration of on the rod is proportional to x with a negative sign so from this we can calculate the value of the time period of oscillation will be equal to 2 pi under root of 2 root 2 m r q by k q q this is the value thing. so time period this values we can substitute the value of k 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught can be substituted and we can get the end up with the answer this this is equal to 4 pi r into under root of 2 root 2 pi epsilon naught into mr divided by q q this is the time period of oscillation of the rod along the axis today's second doubt has been asked by abhishek let's see what the question says it says two small identical balls lying on a horizontal plane are connected by a massless spring one ball say number ball number two is fixed at o and the other ball is free the balls are charged in identically as a result of which the spring length increases two times determine the change in frequency determine the change in frequency see here the this ball is fixed at this point this is fixed on there and this is movable one is there both are given identical charges so this repel here the spring constant is not given but what information is given to us that because of this repulsion as a result of which the spring length increases by two times so from this information we have to calculate the spring constant okay and then we have to find the what is the change in frequency earlier so it was fixed it was moving then earlier it was moving with a frequency of 1 by 2 pi under root of m by k so now with what frequency it will be determine the change in frequency when charge were not there it was oscillating with this frequency when charge is there with what frequency they will be oscillating so our problem reduces to we have to see when charge is there what restoring force will be acting on this second thing that this k is not given k need to be calculated from this information the question says that the natural length of the spring was l and when the charge were given to this when i give the q charge and q charge to this one this spring get elongated and spring length become 12 so this was l length was there and when we give the charge it becomes the 12 this is that equilibrium position is there and again uh, it will be executing shm about this point okay so if i want to write the equations at the equilibrium position at the equilibrium position the spring force must be uh, balancing the electrostatic forces so kl is the spring force and k q square by 2l ka whole square so i write that a q square by 2l ka square where a i have written a is nothing but uh, thus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught so i avoided writing k because here k is a spring constant to avoid confusion i have written like this and so from this we can got that k l is equal to a q square by 4 l square this is an equation 
we obtain between the spring constant and the charge value because spring constant is not given the question. So now if I draw the free body diagram at the position when it has been displaced by x from the natural from the equilibrium position depending by the x distance from the equilibrium position at that instant I want to write the force free body diagram the force by 1 will be the repulsive force will be there a q square by 2L plus X whole square minus spring force and spring force is equal to KL plus X because elongation is L length become 2L at the equilibrium so new separation become 2L plus X square so if I want to simplify this A Q square I take 2L common out of this 2L common I will take then become 4L square into 1 plus X by 2L the whole square minus k into l plus x so this i can take i can do the binomial expansion and i can write this equal to a q square by 4 l square into 1 plus or 1 minus in fact uh, this become 1 minus 2x by 2l minus k L plus X but if this quantity you will see the a q square by 4 L square this quantity we know this is nothing but the KL here so in place of this what I can write is equal to KL this one nothing but the KL into 1 minus X by L minus K L plus X so if you simplify this one then we can obtain KL minus kx minus uh, kl and minus kx so kl kl cancelled out the data is given in such a way so f is equal to minus 2 kx or the acceleration of the ball the, which is movable is equal to minus 2 k by m into x so it will be executing simple harmonic motion so now the frequency of oscillations the frequency of oscillation will be equal to 1 by 2 pi under root of m by 2 k will be there when charge is given to the both the sphere identical charge is given to this one and they oscillate but before when the charge were not given we know that the frequency of oscillation is equal to f is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root of m by k this is the frequency of oscillation when charge were not given only two body connected by spring and this is the uh, as oscill frequency when the charge is given by both the forces electrostatic forces and both react and in the condition that x is much much lesser than l that's why we apply the binomial expansion so what we say that this is the f naught original was there and this is my f dash l right so this can be written as f dash is equal to 1 by root 2 times f naught so the frequent new frequency in the presence of charges become 1 by root 2 times the original frequency. next doubt has been asked by Soumya let's read the question a long cylindrical volume contains a uniformly distributed charge of density rho find the flux due to the electric field through the curved surface of a small cylinder whose axis is op and whose radius is small a your o lies on the axis ab of the main cylinder containing the charge rho and its axis op is perpendicular to the ab and it lies completely within the main cylinder so what the question is saying is that there is a cylinder this one is a cylinder right there and other axis of cylinder right there in this cylinder inside you have a small cylinder of like this type and the density is rho and in this small cylinder there is a small cylinder which flat face one flat face is on the axis of the big cylinder we have considered a small cylindrical area and we have to find out what is the flux through the curved surface through the curved surface of small cylinder how much flux will pass through if we have an infinitely long cylinder, charged cylinder, charge density suppose a row is there, then we know it produces electric field everywhere radially outward electric field is being produced. Everywhere it will be producing radially outward electric field will be produced like this. All, all the directions. And we know how to calculate the electric field at a distance 
x from it inside point what is the there to calculate this type of electric field what we do we all of us know that we take a gaussian surface of this type passing through that point and we try to calculate the this suppose the h is the height of this gaussian surface and net flux has to be equal to charge enclosed by epsilon naught so net flux is equal to charge enclosed by epsilon naught from that we calculate what is the net flux the suppose e the electric field e into 2 pi x h is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into charge enclosed lambda is the charge density there or rho is the there so rho into this much volume to be calculated so rho into pi x square into h pi x square into h and from this we can obtain rho by 2 epsilon naught into x is the electric field at a distance x from the axis of the cylinder uniformly charged uh, cylinder is there and the axis we know now we see what the question is saying right now. the question is asking that in this cylinder you take a another cylindrical surface this red one is cylindrical surface which radius is equal to small a this is the radius of this small region that consider we have region this is radius there and this length of this region is equal to x so question is asking to find out what is the flux through the curved surface of this cylinder so this is the line there then in this line radially outward field will be going like this but if you have a cylinder like this then if you see three dimensional c somewhere into the piercing into not in this plane but in the inside the plane somewhere will be piercing into this wall there so if you try to calculate what the questions is saying is that uh, let's see we know the field at this point so find out the flux through the flat surface first flux through flat surface there are two flat surface flat surface one flat surface two flat surface one will be equal to zero because here electric field itself is zero and through the flux through the flat surface two will be nearly it will be perpendicularly going because radially outward going and you have a very small region perpendicularly so this will be equal to e into pi a square where a the radius of the cylindrical region considered so we know this equal to rho by 2 epsilon naught into x into pi a square this is the flux through the flat surface too so this is a total flux through the both the flat surfaces we got it now if it try to find out the flux through the all the surfaces by Gauss law, you know the flux to all the surfaces equal to 1 by epsilon naught into Q enclosed. So, flux total I want to find out total flux will be equal to how much flux will pass through rho by volume pi a square into x by epsilon naught. So, this is the flux through the whole of the surfaces. And this is the flux to the two only to the two flat surfaces. So if I want to find out the flux through the curved surface, this will be the flux to the all surfaces minus the flux through the flat surfaces. So this, if you substitute, this is the half of this one is there. So it's equal to rho pi a square x by two epsilon naught will be the total flux through the curved surface of the considered cylinder will be there if that cylinder is placed such a way that one of the flat surface on the axis the axis of the cylinder surface considered is perpendicular to the axis of the cylindrical charged cylinder this is, and this is the axis of this one they are perpendicular to each other and this region is placed here one and here then through the curved surface we calculated the total flux will be equal to pi pi a square x by 2 epsilon not will be the answer next doubt has been sent by sayak here is an interesting question from electrostatics where concept of rotation mechanics has been applied here uh, used let's see read the question two point masses of mass capital m and four capital m are fixed to the ends of a massless straight rod mass 4m is kept neutral but mass capital M is given a charge plus Q. In the middle of the rod, another charge point mass capital M with charge minus Q is fixed. The whole system is kept on a frictionless horizontal surface perpendicular to uniform horizontal electric field as shown. And question is asking the ratio of the speed of 4M and M 
with charge minus q when both moving and ratio the magnitude of acceleration of minus q and plus q so what the question is saying if we see then here there is a some electric field there electric field is like this uniform electric field in a horizontal surface and uh, here there is a massless rod there and in this massless rod there is 4m mass and m mass and at the man another m is here this is no charge is given to this one 4m ko no charge is given and to this m and middle m ko minus q and and may another m is there plus q charge is given so this will start experiencing forces because the charge particle placed in electric field they will experience force this minus q will be experiencing force in this q into e and this will experience q into e so there will be a net torque will be acting see net force is zero net force is zero but the net torque will be there in the system so if you see as the net force is zero what will happen the center mass of the system will be at rest but as the net torque is there it will have some angular motion so center mass will not be moving but it will have angular motion so let's find out to find out this one let's find locate the center mass first and with what angular acceleration how much torque will be acting in the system how it will be moving we'll be discussing and answer the following questions so we have drawn the free body diagram of the two charged particle one is on charge no force will be acting and this two equal and opposite forces and net force will be equal to zero net force on the system will be equal to zero f net is equal to zero so f net is equal to zero means acceleration of center of mass will be equal to zero and for this system you want to calculate the total uh, 6m there and the, we want to calculate m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus m3 r3 by m1 plus m2 we do we'll get the center of mass will come out to be here this is c point so if i say this length is l this will be l by 2 and another l by 2 so whole system will be rotating about this axis about the center of mass so the first question is saying that if they are rotating so this will be moving in a circular path and this also will be moving in a circular path of what is this so saying question is saying that find the speed or ratio of speed or ratio of speed of this mass and this end so once you understood that this is a pure rotation is there then it is very simply there this v1 by v2 is equal to your omega r1 by omega r2 because both are moving in circular path so omega omega will cancel because the rod will have a uniform omega it will be same omega for all the points will be there at any instant of time so uh, so basically you have to find out r1 and r2 suppose this is my one and this is so question is saying that ratio of the speed of this 4 m bala particle and this m with the negative sign is saying this two ka ratio you have to find out so basically we are interested about this this radius and this radius is there so both the radius from this point this symmetrical will be there l by 2 this one also each and this will same will be there so radius it is also cancelled so we got this equal to 1 is to 1 will be the answer of this 1 is to 1 is the answer of this because center mass is here and this system will be rotating like this of course the directions will be di different different will be there about this point uh, center mass will be rest and this will have some torque we'll see the universal direction alpha will be there but the speed will be omega r1 r2 so distance separation will it will be depending on So if you see the question, it says that uh, ratio of the mass speed of 4m and m with the negative charge will be equal to 1 is to 1. The answer also given B. So we have checked this one. Now say the ratio of the magnitude of acceleration of minus q and plus q. These two charges are there. Their ratio of the magnitude of acceleration. We have to see the magnitude of acceleration. Let's before we calculate that, let's calculate what is the alpha of the rod is there. So we have to find the torque. As we know, there are net force is zero so torque about any point will be same so let's calculate the torque about uh, this point suppose you calculate about this point so only this force will be producing torque so net torque we can write net torque is equal to suppose this length i have taken the l i have taken this and the l so l into q e r cross f will be the k cap direction what is the moment of inertia of the system about this point we'll see this will be zero will be 4m into l square plus m into l square so 5 ml square into alpha is equal to l q e in the k cap direction i love that this rod has a tendency to move in the k cap directions k cap means this will be in the uh, 
anti clockwise time so alpha we can calculate this to equal to q e by 5 m l in the k cap direction this is the alpha of the system will be there alpha of the system now if you see these two particles we have to calculate about this uh, acceleration of this particle this particle so what is happening acceleration this at any instant their omega will be same their alpha will be same because alpha of the system we have calculated so if i move in a circular path something move in a circular path two acceleration will be there one will be the radial acceleration and another will be the tangential acceleration so this also will be moving in a circular path uh, this 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 particle also moving in a circular path so whole system is moving about the center mass so it will also having also omega square l and alpha l radial acceleration and tangential acceleration so let's see so total acceleration is equal to under root of omega square into r ka whole square plus alpha into r ka whole square at any point of time so if you see that what is omega will be there because it is moving with a uh, constant torque constant angular acceleration acting so omega is equal to alpha t so i want to write this one alpha t ka square ka r ka whole square plus alpha r ka whole square so this i will take this r square and r square are there both the places r square there r can be taken outside r under root of alpha to the power square t to the power 4 plus alpha square of course alpha also i could have taken common also so at there so if you see for the both the charge particle whichever charge particle will take also the alpha is same omega time is same for both the charge particles so what will be different is that they are radii there so if you see the question it asks about the ratio of magnitude of minus q and the ratio of magnitude of acceleration of minus q and plus q it is asking so we'll see where the minus q and where the plus q there so they are rotating about their center of mass so this is rotating with l by 2 so this will be rotating with l by 2 plus l 3 l by 2 there so one radius is negative charge ka l by 2 so other the 3 l by 2 is there so i write r1 is equal to l by 2 and r2 is equal to 3 3 r2 i'll be writing r2 here is equal to 3 l by 2 so if the question is asking about to calculate the ratio of the acceleration a1 by a2 will be equal to this two the term will be cancelled out and will be equal to r1 by r2 alone and r1 by r2 is nothing but 1 is to 3 so we got that a1 is to a2 negative charge acceleration magnitude of negative charge acceleration and magnitude of positive charge at any instant will be equal to 1 is to 3 will be there that we found out so in the question is saying that different that it first question is saying the first option is saying that varies with time no it does not varies with time 1 is to 1 no 1 is to 2 no 1 is to 3 is the correct answer d also given here so this is the magnitude ratio of the magnitude of the acceleration of two charge particle that we calculated we will be taking the next doubt and this has been asked by akshita here is the question let's read it it says an infinite wire having charge density lambda passes through one of the as of a cube having as length l for the flux passing through each surface not in contact with the wire so there are different options has been given we'll see what the question is talking all about there is a cube and in this cube there are six faces are there and the question is saying that we need to put one wire like this at one of the corners suppose this is the corner there i put a wire like this infinitely long wire so is asking the how many flux which pass through the faces of the cube which is not the connected or touching this wire is there lambda is the charge per unit length is given to use lambda is the charge per unit unit length and this l is the length of each side of the cube is there so this is why be my rod i have just shown only short because infinite long is there to explain 
so from this rod electric lines of force will be emanating and from the wire there we know that it goes radially outward every direction it goes and here also lines of force will be going like this so how the lines of force will go if you see that here on this line it will be emanating and going in the this directions like this like this like this Will there be any flock through this surface, top surface? No. Similarly, in this wire also, this face also, it will be going like this. So on this wire also, as from the wire, the lines of force will be emanating. On this also, there will not be flock. They are grazing over this. Similarly, here also, they are grazing over this. Similarly, there is a face behind this, behind this surface, this side. There will be another face will be there behind, opposite to this face. There also, it will be grazing over this. So there are four surfaces, their flocks will not be passing through. Where the flocks will be passing through? This surface and the bottom surface. The behind this side and bottom. The two surfaces are there. Out of six surfaces, four surfaces, electric lines of force will not penetrating. They are grazing over. They are sweeping over the surfaces. So no flocks will be there through these four surfaces which are touching to this wire. But there are two surfaces which are not touching and they are symmetrical about this wire. In those two surfaces, electric flocks will pass through. We know the total flocks we know the total flux through the surface phi is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into charge enclosed. How much charge will be enclosed within this uh, surface? Because this rod is there and it touching lambda L amount of charge is here. But this wire, whole of the wire is not inside the cube. This wire is being, this, this corner is being sheared by here one other cube will be there, here another cube will be there, on the top another cube will be there. So how many cubes are there? They are touching this one. Either there are four cubes are there. They are touching this corner. There are four cubes. They are this itself here and here and here. We have over this four are there. So this is not lambda L, lambda L by four. Is the charge enclosed within this? Is the total flux is there? But this total flux is there are six surfaces. There are four into zeros are there plus two into suppose phi dash is the phi dash through flux through. The surface which is not touching is equal to this one lambda l by 4 epsilon naught. So I got the phi dash that the flux through one of the face is equal to lambda l by 8 epsilon naught. There's a flux through the face which is not touching the wire. So if you see the options, what are the options are there here? Lambda l by 2 epsilon 4 epsilon naught, 2 epsilon naught, 8 epsilon naught, 0. So this will be our epsilon lambda l by 8 epsilon naught is the answer. We will be taking the last doubt for today and this is the doubt sent by Sveta. Let's read the question. It is a previous JE questions. It says two identical charge spheres suspended from a common point by two massless strings of length L are initially at a distance small d apart because of their mutual repulsion where small d is much much smaller than L. The charge begins to leak from both the spheres at a constant rate. As a result, the charges approach each other with a velocity v then function of the distance x between them that is find it is asking to find out velocity as a function of x how the velocity will depend upon x what power of x it will depend it is asking about that thing what are the key points are there we'll see one thing is that saying that charges charge leak from the sphere at a constant rate so here the 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 rate of leakage of charge is constant, leak at a constant rate, constant rate, this is very important. Second thing that D is much, much smaller than X. These two are there. And we have to solve this one, this problem we will be solving. Let's solve this problem. If we draw the free body diagram of the block, or the, of the spheres, then one electrostatic force, there are equal charges are there, one will be repelling like this, F electrostatic will be there. There will be tension will be there, there will be some mg will be there. And we can uh, apply Lamy's theorem, this angle is theta is there, we can apply Lamy's theorem. And we can write f by this sine of this angle is equal to mg by sine of this angle. And we can obtain the equation that by sine theta is equal to mg by cos theta. And we can get from this tan theta is equal to Fe by Mg. As theta is given very very small, we can write from this tan theta is equal to theta we can put 
is equal to f phi by m g and from this we can write this length is equal to x is there so this can be written x by 2 by l is equal to f phi by m g this we simplify that will write and put the value of f e what is the value of f e f e is equal to k q square by x x by 2l is equal to k q square by m g into x square so from this we get that x cube is proportional to q square or i got that x is proportional to q to the power f x to the power 3 by 2 x to the power 3 by 2 will be proportional to so differentiating both the sides of the equations what we can get 3 by 2 x to the power half into dx by dt is proportional to dq by dt but in the question it is given that this is a constant quantity so we can write very easily that uh, from this equations root x into velocity of the ball is a constant quantity or we can write that v is proportional to 1 by root x or v is proportional to x to the power minus half let me the question so case question say that how this will be there so v is proportional depending on values are given so v to the power proportional to x to the power minus half is the correct answers will be there with this we have come to the end of today's doubt discussion session you want to convey something you can write do your message in the comment box you have still more further doubt that to be discussed you can send your doubt to writefonda at gmail.com so signing off for today so keep learning keep enjoying have a lot of fun bye take care